What's going on guys? So in today's video, I'm going to talk a little bit about what I've learned from my season of singleness and maybe some things that you guys can kind of not have to reinvent the wheel and have to learn for yourself. So stay tuned. Before I get into the video, guys, I just want to make a proper announcement that we are well over 200 subscribers now and uh, it would really help me out, help me spread these videos and get them out there if you guys would consider subscribing. If you're, uh, if you're watching and you're not subscribed, go ahead and hit that notification bell because the amount of views that I get in the first hour or two will greatly affect how much YouTube recommends these videos to other people. So uh, just leave a like, comment, and subscribe with that notification bell on all. Thanks for that in advance. Now let's go ahead and get into the video. So number one, the number one thing that I learned that I kind of didn't really realize was such a big deal was when I very first started looking for a relationship, I think that I kind of was loose about what kind of Christian girl I was thinking that, that I could date. So if you guys have watched the channel for a while now, um, you know probably from some of my earlier videos that I have really in the past year or so started taking my faith really, really seriously. Um, if you guys are interested in seeing my full testimony, which is a pretty long video, but if you guys are really, really dedicated and really want to get to know me, I'll leave that link probably in a card or something, maybe magically where I'm pointing right now. So anyway, I was in kind of a place where I, I was definitely trying to do my best to live for Jesus. I, I didn't ever get involved in any sort of uh, drugs, sex, or alcohol, anything like that. And by the way, there's nothing wrong with drinking in moderation, um, but that's aside from the point. So basically, basically, I ended up going out with a lot of girls and that, that I that I didn't really think were incredibly strong Christians. Some of you might be familiar with the term missionary dating, and that's kind of where you feel like you're at a place with your faith, or you feel like you have faith and maybe they don't even have faith at all, and you think, oh, well, this person is really nice and they're really attractive, and maybe I can just sway them to my way of thinking. For the most part, doesn't really work out that way. Usually you just end up getting yourself in a lot of trouble. Um, and so I, I didn't end up getting myself in real serious trouble necessarily. I ended up getting hurt on multiple occasions when I felt like I wanted to do the relationship in what I felt like was God's way and people wanted something other than that. And so I really, in this season of singleness, this season of kind of finding leads and being excited and then having them just totally go nowhere, God was like, no, dude, that is that is not in my plan for you. So really, in this season of singleness, I figured out that God really does not want us to be unequally yoked. And that does not just mean that he doesn't want us with unbelievers. That means if you're a really strong Christian, you need to be with somebody that, that's also a really strong Christian. I've seen way too many people, in particular I see this with, with girls, where they will go out with these guys because for whatever reason they, they feel like, I don't know, I think that a lot of them don't know just how just how much they have going for them and just how many other options, how many really good and godly guys there are out there. Guys get a really bad rap. I know a lot of guys in my inner circle that, like I say in my uh, Christians, to, to Christian girls looking for a godly husband, I can't remember what the exact title of the video is. But anyway, in that video, those are the kind of guys that I'm talking about. Guys that, that would give anything in order to, that would give anything to love you like Christ loved the church. Basically, what I'm saying is that God really wants someone for you that will push you and help you to grow spiritually. If you are right now in a relationship with a guy or a girl, 
that you just don't feel like challenges you spiritually, then you probably really need to break up with that person or at the very least have a talk with that person because that's that's what God means, I think, when he says that we are not to be equally yoked. We need somebody that can push us and, and at the very least is not making us do things that compromise our faith. I know in a lot of cases with relationships, I could have very easily tried to see how far I could go in order to just skirt along the line of, of what God would consider a sin. Um, and you do not need that constant temptation in your life. For instance, if you decide that you don't want to be physically intimate until marriage and the person that you're with is constantly pressuring you for that, you need to run and you need to get out of that situation. Because I can tell you that in the Bible, it says specifically that when Satan himself confronts you, that you put on the full armor of God. But when it comes to lust, the Bible is clear that you should flee that. So if Satan himself shows up in your driveway, then put on the full armor of God. But if your ex-girlfriend pulls up in your driveway, then you'd better get out. <laughs> you better get out. That's legitimately what the Bible is saying there. The other thing, or the second thing that I've really learned during this time of singleness is that I have a lot of work to do on myself. When I first decided back, I wanna say it was last October that I had had enough of this whole being single thing. This, this stuff is, is for the birds. Um, I had absolutely no idea just how many issues I had. I can tell you that my first point with kind of being lukewarm, not necessarily lukewarm, but just not, not as close with God as I, as I felt like I would like to be. Uh, my faith has really matured in this time. And just figuring out what I'm, what I'm really looking for and also working out a lot of issues with as far as being an angry person or still having, still holding on to uh, a pornography addiction. Um, just things that, things that I've taken care of in the past year. Now, I'm not perfect with all of them. I mean, I still struggle with, with things that, that a lot of people my age struggle with, not making an excuse for it, but, but I, I still struggle with that stuff. And if you think that you need to be perfect before you come to find a relationship, find a marriage, I can tell you that, that is, that's not going to happen. We are, we are all perfect. We are all imperfect and damaged people. I, I believe in, in church today, my pastor said that one thing that, that people like to say in churches at, at, at weddings is there's, there's one problem with this marriage, the bride and the groom. And that's because we are all evil, wicked, wretched, black-hearted sinners in need of a savior. And the third thing, and I'm not even going to say it's something that I learned, but it's just an, another note that I'm going to talk about. It's that I grew in a lot of ways that I would not have otherwise grown in for a relationship. Now, I'm going to level with you and be completely honest here. When... I kept on striking out on these long-term relationships. A lot of my thinking was, wow, I guess, I guess I have a lot of things that God wants me to fix and figure out before he delivers me from this season of singleness, right? So I decided, wow, well, okay, maybe when I get clean and I stop watching pornography, maybe, maybe then God will, will deliver me, um, Will, will give me a relationship. Uh, maybe when I stop having these, I was just one of those people that just kind of very pessimistic, kind of a, just a, an overall negative outlook on the world that I really needed to fix. And, and part of fixing that was just, and all of fixing that really was just getting close to God, um, just deciding to devote time to him and, and I can tell you also that starting this channel has been a huge thing and I don't think that I probably would have started this channel if I'd been busy with a relationship. I can tell you that, and, and I read a book about this, it's called The Happiest People on Earth by, uh, I think it's either Demos or Demos Shikarian. Uh, he talks about that the happiest people on earth are the people that have found their calling from God 
And while this channel might not necessarily be my calling from God, I definitely believe that one of my spiritual gifts is to communicate and just to overall be open with people, to perhaps be an encourager like the Bible talks about. So yeah, guys, those were three things that I that I learned slash want to tell you about as far as relationships so that maybe you don't have to go through all the stupidness that I went through trying to figure out why I was single and why God has kind of allowed me to stay at this point in my life. Um, so, you know, you... Uh, you may very well be in a position where God wants you to find a girlfriend or find a boyfriend or uh, to be in a relationship or married soon. And that's, that's absolutely okay. There is, there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. But I think that we should also realize that there is a time in our lives for singleness and there's a time in our lives for marriage. And you might just right now be in a time of singleness and that's okay. We can embrace that. I know that in particular, as, as we start to get older, we start to kind of feel that pressure and, and start to feel that clock in our heads. Um, but I, I can tell you guys that, that the time that you spend single, and in particular, the, the years from about 18 to 25, just like in a lot of disciple groups, that's kind of the age range, you are going to make so many decisions. I mean, we are we are really coming to a crossroads in our lives at that age. And not only that, but but we're just we're shaping and we're growing into the people that we're going to be for the rest of our lives. So just just try not to rush it along and that is probably the most hypocritical thing that I could possibly say on the subject because I've been basically trying to rush it along for about the past year and a half. But anyway, guys, I hope this encouraged you. If it did, please leave a like and a comment down below. It really helps me out. And like I said earlier on in this video, you can subscribe with all notifications on. It really helps me out. It helps support the mission. So thank you guys so much for 200 subscribers. Here's to the next 200 and beyond. Thank you guys.